Geometry and CAD exercises. This movie is just very specific to go with this assignment called Geometry and CAD exercises, an AutoCAD file that I've created. Most people won't have to watch this. Um, if you get stuck on any particular exercise, that's what this is for. First of all, about the settings, we're in fractional units. If you were to type units and take a look at what we're in, we're in fractional, very precise, and so it assumes that we're going to be in inches. You do not have to type the inch mark. We will use polar tracking turned on with polar tracking set to 45 degree increments. You can use your mouse there or set your display there at 45. We can also turn on the object snap. With object snap turned on, we'll take a look at settings and we see that we have endpoint, midpoint, center, intersection, and tangent turned on for the sake of this exercise. And we'll also turn on dynamic input. So just those three options are turned on down in the status bar. Uh, the student could put in their name there and print this out or show it to their instructor either way. First of all, number one, divide line AB into three equal parts, underscore D-I-V-I-D-E. We first select the objects to divide. We say that we want to divide this into three equal segments. What's been created now is some either hard to see or invisible nodes at the one-third marks. To use it, simply use the line command or any um, tool that you wanted to to get to that point. Invoke with shift right click the node snap, object snap, and then you can actually get to those unseen nodes to divide this line into three equal parts. If you wish to divide it at the end also or just to show the end, you would just go on to the endpoint snap modes. Bisect line AB. There's two ways of doing this. First way would be just to make a line perpendicular to this existing line and put it off to the side. We'll call that line CD. Then we'll use a line using the midpoint snap and finish it with the parallel snap. When you use parallel snap, do not click on that line. Just simply wait for the parallel snap to come up and then you'll be able to use the parallel snap when you put your mouse approximately in that area. There's another way of doing this and that would be to use the X line command which is a construction line. You see that you have options there. One of them is bisect. To bisect a line, pick its vertex and this is usually used to bisect an angle. Since we have 180 degrees the angle start point is this, the angle end point is that, point B, and you now have a infinitely long line bisecting angle or line AB. You would just have to use the trim command and delete portions of it in order to suit your purposes. Enlarge a given drawing so that it becomes as long as A1, B1. Here's the original drawing. Just simply select it, copy it, give it a known point to handle or to grab that drawing with and place it on the new point AB. Now in order to scale that, there is a command called scale. You select the objects, in this case I'll use the window method that is all inclusive, that gets all the parts of that. We'll select the objects. We did select the objects. Hit enter to say we're done. The base point will be the beginning. Now we're in, in a freehand mode, making that larger and smaller. To get it to actually the right length, we'd have to use an option. As you can see there, the down arrow is there. We're going to use reference. The reference is going to be the old length, the old A, B, and the new length is going to be the new B1. And that's that. To bisect an angle AB, we'll use the X line command and we'll specify rather than a point, we'll go down to bisect. That was with the down arrow. It asks for an angle vertex and then the two points that finish the angle 
and that bisects angle AB. It's an infinitely long construction line, so you would have to use the trim command or delete command to get rid of parts of it that you don't want. I'm just going to delete it for now because it's in the way. Copy angle ABC to a new location. So we want to copy these two lines. I'll just use the backwards or intersecting window method to get all of those selected. I'm going to copy it first as it is with the base point B to the new base point B. And now it's just a matter of rotating this angle to match this angle. We'll use the rotation command, rotate. We'll select the two objects, give it a base point, and there's a down arrow. We want to use a reference. The reference line was the old line, AB, and the new line is our new AB length or segment, and that rotates it into its new position. Construct a triangle on base AB with the other sides 2 and 1 8 and 3 and 5 8. Easiest way to do that is just a circle. Place a circle there, type in 2 and, in other words, that's the hyphen there, 1 8. That's the way to do mixed numbers with fractions. And then another one, 3 and 5 8. So that would be circle with the center on B. And we type in 3 and 5 8. That intersection now creates the triangle for us. So we would just finish off the triangle from the end point to the apex to the intersection there, and then to the other point B. You erase the circles, that creates your triangle for you. Draw an equilateral triangle based on the given side AB. One way to do that would be to do a circle exactly centered on A and the radius of AB. Turn around and do the same thing from B to A and that intersection there creates a creates the apex, creates the vertex of an equilateral triangle. Another way of doing that would be just to specify a line at point A and since we don't know the length of these lines we could at least type in the interior angle. Uh, the interior angles of an equilateral triangle are 60 degrees, so I would just simply get off of the length, tab over to the angle, type in 60, and of course you have to be careful with that depending on which way you're going from. In this case, this line was already orthogonal. And put in the other opposite. In this case, the angle will be 180 minus 60, so that'll be 120 degrees, and then merely trim. Dry square on given side AB. So the easiest way to do that would be polygon. Poly is good enough to get that to come up. Four sides, it can be as many sides as we wish. And the method as you see there with the down arrow, we're going to use the edge method, which is specific rather than use it in the center of a circle and that'll be the edge right there, a square drawn on given side AB. Inscribe a square in the given circle with, with a resulting square orthogonal, in other words straight left and right, up and down, horizontal and vertical, polygon, four sides, specify the center, make it inscribed, use the 45 degree angle polar tracking. Circumscribe the square about the given circle with the resulting square orthogonal. So again, polygon, number of sides is four. Specify the center of the circle. We'll circumscribe it. And if we use zero or 90 degrees, that'll create it orthogonally. Circumscribe a hexagon about the given circle with the resulting base of the hexagon orthogonal. So that'll be polygon. Hexagon is six sides. Specify the center of the circle as the center of it. We are going to circumscribe it. And so we're going to have to choose the bottom or the top to be the point at which we snap to that circle. And it creates it orthogonally with the bottom and the top 
straight. Draw a circle through points A, B, and C. So that's just simply a circle with the option with the down arrow, three point. Any three points can define a circle, so we'll get to the intersect snap there. Be sure the intersect is turned on, you don't get to the midpoint, but you use the intersection snap. It's easy to get off on that intersection. And those three points now define that circle. Draw a two and a quarter inch circle tangent to AB at point P. There's a few different ways of doing this. One would be just to make a line perpendicular to the existing line and off to the side, any particular length. And then draw another line starting at point P. So that would be the intersect snap mode. And be sure to get on the intersection of point P, not the midpoint or some other point of that and then go parallel to that first line that you drew. To finish that line, simply stay on the length value and type in 2 hyphen 1 fourth to create that line exactly 2 and 1 fourth inches long. Then create a circle on that point and you could type in the length of the radius or just simply get on the end point and that creates your circle. So the alternative to that would be to use the offset tool and place line AB exactly two and one fourth of an inch up. We would offset, specify the offset distance as two and one fourth, select the object to offset, and there you have it. Now create a line which is perpendicular to this new line and ends at the intersection of point at point P. That new line creates the center of the circle and there you go. So there's an option there. There's probably a few other options and there's certainly ways to create macros to do that same thing. Draw a line tangent to the circle at point P. Here's one method that sometimes works and that is to be sure that object snap is turned on with the settings set to have tangent turned on. Then also have turned on object snap tracking. This should track a point from this intersection and using a tangent snap. An alternative to this would be to create a line from the center of the circle to the point and then create a line that is perpendicular to that first line and then create a line that goes from the center and out parallel to that line and then simply offset that exactly that distance. There could be a macro made for that so we'll just simply it'll go from a line from the intersection to the center, a new line perpendicular to that line, another line, another line from the center point or the end point of that line to and parallel to that line that you just created and then simply offset that line exactly the offset distance of that length from the center to point P and then simply select the object to offset and that is going to be tangent to the circle at point P. To lengthen the line like that just simply click on the line hesitate at the end go down to lengthen and now you're lengthening the line without changing the angle of it at all. Draw a 2 and 1 8 inch arc tangent to both given lines. Perhaps the best way is just to do a circle. Use the method TTR. That's with the down arrow. Specify the two lines that you'll be tangent to and then specify the two hyphen 1 8 inch as the radius and then trim. 
easiest way to trim something simple like that is to not select anything as the cutting element so just hit enter and then select the the element that you want to trim out next exercise draw a two inch arc tangent to both given arcs very similar to the last one just simply circle TTR specify the two arcs that you're tangent to in this case if you want it to be up here specify points up here not down here it's going to place the circle down below so the second point and then two and enter and that creates the circle that's tangent now a tangent circle circle tangent to the three given elements the only way to invoke that that I know of is to use the mouse and go down to tangent 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 and just simply specify the three objects that you're going to be tangent to few different methods of making an ellipse. Make an ellipse horizontally from the given point A, and the ellipse will be five inches in major, major axis total length, and the minor radius from the center will be one and a half inches out. In other words, three inches in the total height. So you type in ellipse, specify one end point of the major axis and the other point, in this case, horizontally, orthogonally, five units away and now you're specifying the not the length but the radius from the center out in this case it'll be one and a half and that creates that ellipse starting ellipse with the center starting at point a with a major radius extending to point b and the major radius extending to point c so that's an ellipse in this case we'll use the other method called center starting from the center we specify that as the major radius and point C is the minor radius. Finally, how to place a five inch by four inch rectangle with the lower left corner from this corner, two inches to the right and three units up from the lower left corner of this green box. So that's simply rectangle. We'll specify a corner point, but in this case we'll use the from snap And then since we're going in an offset from that, we have to specify the at symbol to say that that is our relative point that we're going to. So I'm going to go over two inches, comma, three units, and then specify the size of the rectangle, five, comma, four, and enter. And that's it. That creates all of the exercises in this little assignment. Hope you've learned something about geometry and if you find better ways than mine, uh, remember these are exercises made for beginner CAD students and I did not want to get into macros. So many of you will find tons of macros that do the same thing, but that's a little bit advanced. I just wanted to start out simple with no macros with this assignment.